I have my notes and I'm ready. Hi, I'm Olivia and I'm the Witch of Wanderlust. Today I'm drinking Bloodberry by Spice Traders Teas. It's a really good company, I've mentioned them before. If you have the chance, absolutely grab one of their teas because they have delicious teas. So today I'm talking about, ooh, what am I talking about? So we're just gonna get right into it. When you start down this path, there's a lot of overwhelming information and also overwhelming voices and noise that's coming from everywhere that's telling you, you have to have this, you have to have that. Especially for spells, sometimes it just sounds like if you're a witch, you have to have this, or you're not a witch if you don't have X, Y, and Z. And it just gets really overwhelming and loud. And also when you start looking up these things, it kind of gets expensive. And I believe that you don't need tools. I believe that you don't need any of these things. But to me, I love using tools. So I can completely understand why, especially starting out, it's so much easier to focus your intent and your energy on a spell when you are using tools. So. I have compiled a bunch of things that I have made myself that I use in my craft and or something that you can make or buy for little to nothing or nothing at all. The first thing I'm gonna say, and I know you hear this everywhere, but it's just so true. Use what you have on hand. Go into your kitchen and use the herbs that you have there. You're gonna find things like vinegar, lemons, rosemary, bay leaves, cinnamon. You can use anything in your kitchen when you're cooking or when you're baking to do spells within that food or in that act of cooking, or you can even make bread or cookies or things like that as offerings if you work with deities or spirits. Most people already have tea light candles at home. Tea light candles are relatively very cheap. They come in bulk or you can find them at pretty much any store. Pen and paper. This one has saved my life so many times because pen and paper, you can do so much with it and not just write down spells or make sigils with it. You can also make paper spell dolls, poppets. You can make little charm packets so you can put your herbs or whatever you need to and fold it up and tape it and there you go. You can use name paper so if you're doing a spell on yourself or you can do petitions so you can just write your name or write your intention and fold it the according way if that's something that works for you and your craft. Color magic. Oh, color magic is, it, it's everywhere. You can't escape colors. So you can use colors in anything, in things that you wear and things that you bake, the paper or the pen color that you write in or that you use. Mirrors. Every house, more likely than not, has a mirror in it. And if you have multiple mirrors, I like to have a lot of different mirrors hanging up in my house. Mirrors are associated with the supernatural so much. <laughs> a lot and you can also use them for things like scrying you can use them for things like reflection spells so that might that is a little further into everything but mirrors are a really good resource to have so if you look up mirror spells you're going to find a plethora of them and especially in your house you can use those bowls of water i know this sounds really lame but bowls of water are used a lot in spell work and it represents water <laughs> So if you need something like that on your altar, just grab a tiny little cup or a small little bowl or anything that will hold water and you can use that to represent water on your altar or anything that you need water to be represented in spell work or rituals or anything like that. Jars. Use recycled jars. Maybe you're almost done with that salsa or peanut butter. Journals, sketchbooks, or old binders. Even folders. All of these things that you might have left over from last year's school that you just never cleaned out or maybe you just had this extra one that you never used during the school year. Anything like that can be used as a junk grimoire. I actually love having a junk grimoire because then I don't feel like I'm going to mess up my really aesthetic pretty one because I know that everybody wants their really pretty spell book because who doesn't? But sometimes you just don't have the time to sit down and make something super pretty. You just need to jot it down so that you remember it. Of course, you can also use your phone, but I find that it's so much easier for me to write things down physically. So get all of those things out and throw all of your notes, print things out, and put it all in one place until you can transfer it into that pretty grimoire. Or you can even use, ma'am, you can even use any of those extra sketchbooks, journals, folders, or binders to make your aesthetically pleasing grimoire like I did. I actually went and got a super cheap binder and tea stained a bunch of papers and I've just been slowly but surely adding things in 
and making them prettier as I add them in. I'll definitely do a grimoire tour and a grimoire video in the future, but that is to come, so don't worry. Old fabric. So if you know anybody who sews, or maybe you sew, and you just have this big bag of scraps, that is going to help you so much. You can make things like charm bags or spell dolls. If you don't have any scraps, you can even use things like old t-shirts that you were probably going to throw away or give away. You can also just upcycle those and use those as your fabric for any of your spell work. These things you can get for free. Dirt, sticks, and flowers. But I do a lot of home protection spells, so most of the time I just need dirt from my home. Sticks, go on a hike, gather some sticks. And so everything behind me up here, I made from sticks that I found on a hike. And I have these, I guess this kind of like mobile stick figuration. <laughs> Flowers you can use as offerings, depending on the colors, depending on the type of flower, you can definitely use them in your spell work. I would highly suggest not to ingest them. Don't make them into teas, don't eat them, don't do anything like that unless you have bought edible flowers or something that you absolutely know is edible. Just because I don't even wanna get into that. Please don't poison yourself or eat anything that you found on the side of the road because those are sprayed with pesticides and just please don't eat anything you find, please. Salt, going back to the kitchen magic, you can get salt anywhere. And salt is like, that's like the staple. That's like, that salt is witchcraft. You can get a big ass thing of salt at your local grocery store for pretty cheap. I actually get mine at the dollar store because I use a lot of salt in my spell work. So I just like to buy my salt pretty cheap and just keep that near my altar so that I don't, I'm not running back and forth to the kitchen to get the salt. I have my own spell salt. <laughs> Printers. You can use your printer to print out things for your spell book. You can use it to print out sigils if you don't like drawing them. Or you can even find printable tarot cards. So if you don't have access to buying tarot cards, you can always print some out and either use them in your spell work, they're disposable. Yarn, string, cord, anything like that. You can find these at home improvement stores. You can find them at craft stores. I found them at 99 cent stores. Not magic is one of the simplest forms of magic. And it's so easy and pretty effective because it's just so direct. Look not magic up and you're gonna find a lot of different spells and they're all very interesting. That goes a long way. I know somebody who actually carries a cord with her and it's just a small little piece of cord but she uses it for all kinds of spell work and she just cleanses it afterwards and unties the knots and releases the spells. So those are things that you probably already have at your house. The dollar store. One of my favorite places. <laughs> I, I can go a little overboard in the dollar store, I'm not gonna lie, but it just makes me so excited because there's just so, there's so many witchy things there and people have no idea. The biggest thing, especially in my area, there are a lot of saint candles. You'll see things like this, the glass, seven day candles, though I don't know if these are in particular seven day candles because they burn differently, whereas glass candles that you'll find in a botanica are actually made to burn seven days, or at least seven days. But that being said, gotta work with what you got, peel those off, cleanse the candle, and there you go. I actually found these guys at my local grocery store. There's blue, there's green, I just went through a yellow one, there's red, Sometimes I've seen purple. I mean, they had a lot there and they were actually on sale for 80 something cents. And I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? I have a member's card. Yes, please. If you're really looking for some of the candles that have the labels on them, printer. Print some out, make some of your own. Or the easiest way, grab your Sharpie, draw some of your sigils, write down your intentions, whatever you feel like you need to draw on here, and then you light it. Again, you don't have to use black. You can use the silver, you can use the red, you can use any of the colors on your candles. Candle holders are also a really popular thing that I've found at the dollar store, so you can find those there too. If you don't like the colors of them, spray paint them, paint them. I've found 
ceramic and glass plates and bowls that I use for my spell work. You can use them as offering plates. I use my bowl as a money bowl like you saw last week. So you can find those things there too and Hopefully they have a variety of colors that you can choose from so you can use the color magic in that as well. Lighters, matches, you feel me? Boxes. This one is a really interesting one. I found this one at my dollar store but you can also find these in craft stores. So boxes, just super simple, regular, like little gift boxes. You can use these as mini altars. If you're practicing in secret, you can put all of your stuff in here, under your bed, on a shelf, in your closet, whatever you need. Or you can use this to put your spell dolls in. I'll make a video on spell dolls. I love, love, love using poppets. So when we get to that, I will get to that. But when you're doing a poppet, you are linking the poppet to somebody, if not yourself and you want to keep that in a very safe place because it is linked to you. So I like to use boxes to keep them safe. You can find jars, glue, tape, and mint tins. Why, Olivia? Why mint tins? I'm sure you've seen these on the internet all over the place. Travel mini altars. I have one. I'm not gonna go get it because I'm tired. Little travel mini altars. I actually don't carry mine around because I most of the time when I'm doing any of the spell work, it's at home and I've planned it. I've also seen people make little mini spirit boards or pendulum boards on their travel altars and I think that is the cutest and coolest idea. The craft store. This is another very dangerous place for me <laughs> because I love the craft store. You go in there thinking that you only need one thing but then then you see all, all of the possibilities and you're like, I'm all of it. I'll just buy it all. This is the place where you can get string, you can get yarn, you can get thread or needles, you can get paint, you can get chalk. All of these things are going to help you so much. And you can also get candles there too. There are pillar candles at my local craft store, but also there's jar candles and I actually prefer those just because I do enjoy having just candles that smell nice. But also, once they burn down, I melt out the rest of the wax, clean them out, and I use them as my apothecary jars. They have like little seals on them and everything too, so that's really helpful. Speaking of jars, I also have this from my local craft store, just a random jar. They had them in all different colors. I would either use these as offering jars, you could use these for jar spells, or you can even use them as shaker bottles. If you don't know what a shaker bottle is, it's essentially kind of the same thing as a money bowl, so you could make a money shaker jar out of this. You would put things associated with money, you would put your petition in or your intention, and then every time you just kind of want to stir up that energy a little bit, you would shake it. So this isn't something that would bring you a thousand dollars just like that, but it's something that's kind of like reminding me reminding that energy to flow towards you. So with your needle and thread or any kind of fabric that you have, you can sew and create little charm bags such as this. You can draw on them and don't get them wet if it's not if it's water soluble because it will smudge like this. But you can get creative like that or if you're at the craft store, they also sell a lot of different little drawstring bags like this. So you can use I mean they have black ones, they have see-through ones. This really pretty gold, I mean I would probably do like a beauty something with this one, or love, or attraction, anything like that. Y'all aren't ready for this one. <laughs> Air dry clay. Oh my gosh. This stuff, I love it so much for my craft. And there's so much in here. If you haven't seen my vlog, my April vlog, that is where I got it. Maria and I went out and got some air dried clay. We actually originally just got it because I wanted to make some of these evil eye talismans just for fun and it just turned into something so much more. <laughs> she started making little candle holders so what she did was she flattened out a, a, a good chunk and actually stuck her candle in it to make sure that it would fit and then she made a little design or whatever, let it dry, and now she had a candle holder that fit her specific size of candle, which was perfect because I have these little taper candles that I don't have a candle holder for, and every time I found one, the taper candle doesn't fit, and it's just like, why? I also started making these little, I guess, offering coin slab things. I even made a little incense tray. I'm not gonna, 
I'm gonna try not to drop all of this on the ground. So that's coming in handy a lot. That is air dry clay. So that's the stuff that you mold and then you just sit out for one or two days and then it dries completely and you can paint it. Or you can get the kind of clay that you can mold over and over again. And this one I would personally use for poppets. So I have this guy right here. I've had him for about two years actually. And you can mold him however you want. Um, this one actually wasn't used for spell work. Alex just really likes him because he's, uh, he made him Big Booty Judy is what we call him. And he just, he sits watch over the kitchen and holds a peanut. I don't know. If you are also looking for craft store stuff, also find these tiny little vials. So if you're doing really tiny jar spells, I would absolutely try checking out some of your local craft stores because they sell these guys. There are even little chips of different kinds of stones. So if you use stones in your craft and you want to, so if you want to put them in your candle or put them into your jar spell or into a charm bag or into something tiny like this, that would work really well. I'm sure you guys remember this pickle jar that smells like pickles still because guess who's too lazy to clean it? <laughs> it is my candles. These are all my little taper candles. Cheap, really easy. I think I got these for like $10. I got 40 of them or something like that. I'll leave an affiliate link below. Now, if you can't use the big glass candles, if you can't use the taper candles, and that still raises some eyebrows, or anything like, or you're worried about it raising some eyebrows, and you still want to do a candle magic spell, I got you. Birthday candles. You can still anoint them. Carving would be really difficult, but you can. I believe in you. They come in all of the colors, or you can just get a pack of white. You can put them in your travel altar. They burn down so fast. So they're not really going to do anything for you if they're giant spells, if they're really big, heavy energy spells. If you just need a quick little thing or you need something to represent fire just super quick, birthday candles. They're super cheap and really easy to get. I think I covered everything. I thought there was so much more. Other than that, I think I covered most, if not everything. I tried to, but I hope that that gave you guys a little bit more insight to what you have available to you and you just kind of have to see so when you're shopping just kind of see everything in a witchy lens look at something and ask yourself how can i use this in my practice or how would this help in my practice what kind of spells can i use that for this can also be something really fun that if you have any witchy friends or even if they're not like witchy but they like candles or incense or things like that this can be really fun to do if you want to go out and find some sticks to glue together, or if you want to go out and get some air dry clay so that you can mold different candle holders or little coins or beads or offerings or things like that. So just don't limit yourself because even if you don't have a plethora of money to get all of the really shiny and fancy things, you absolutely have at access all of these different things that you can get. And even if you can't buy these things, more likely than not, you have a lot of things in your home that you can use because that's where the craft started was they used the things that they have available. Witchcraft is a tool of need. You don't need tools for anything. They just help sometimes to focus that intention. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys out. If you do end up making something with air dry clay and painting it, or maybe you draw some sigils on your candles and you're really excited to share it, I would love for you to share that and tag the Wonderlust Coven so that we can all see what you're up to. And we have a little community that we can talk back and forth, ask questions, and it's everybody in the Wonderlust Coven. That's it for today. So do share all of those witchy crafts if you end up making some of those because I'd love to see your ideas and what you come up with. As always, best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.